Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Force Shutdown video series where I'm showing you how to kick all the users out of your database whenever you want. Whenever you decide you want to be that guy and say, beat it, and they're going to go bye, right? Okay. <laughs> of course, this is part two, so if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch it. There's the link. Go watch it and come on back. All right, so we split our database. We set up the server table. We've got it so that the main menu will close the database down if it is closed. Let's go into our front end again. Now we're going to need to know when this database started up because if this database started up after the scheduled shutdown time, then that means that the user started it up after the last shutdown. So if the shutdown's 9 p.m., right, and this guy opened up at, you know, 9 a.m. the next day, then we don't need to shut down, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use a temp var. Temp var is a variable that will stay active in the memory. Uh, it even survives errors, but that's not important for this. But temp bars are nice and easy to use. So in the form load event, right, the on load or on open, either one will work fine for this. We're going to say, where are you? Right down here. We're going to say temp bars. What are we going to call it? We're going to call it startup time is now, right now. That'll take the current date and time, put it in a temp bar called startup time. So we can look at this and compare it with, hey, what was the last scheduled shutdown time? Are we after that? Okay, we're good. All right, if one's coming up, then, you know, the current startup time will be less than when the shutdown time hits, and then we'll know that we have to reboot. Okay, makes sense? All right, now comes the tricky part, the timer event. All right, now for practical purposes, you're going to probably want to set this timer event to be something like maybe once every 10 minutes or even once an hour, right? If you're concerned with just like Colin was, just making sure everybody's out of the database at midnight because at 3 a.m. our backup routine runs, if that's the case, set it to once an hour or even once every two hours. Because if you set it to something like once a minute, then that form might steal focus. Like if you're over here working on the customer form, right? This thing over here is going to say, hey, I need a little bit of attention. And if you're in the middle of typing or copying and pasting or something, it might, might interrupt what you're doing. It might. It probably won't, but sometimes it does. All right. So I recommend make this timer interval as long as possible. 10 minutes should be fine, 15, 20 minutes, even at once an hour, I think is plenty. If you want the kind of control where you're doing maintenance during, you know, throughout the day, you're doing maintenance and you want to say, all right, I need everybody out of the database in five minutes so I can post this update or, or you know, refresh the system, whatever. Sure, fine, make it once every five minutes. But if you're concerned, like I said, as a nightly backup event, make it once an hour. That's plenty, okay? For the purposes of class, though, I'm going to set mine to once every 10 seconds so we can see it doing something. I don't want to have to sit here and wait an hour for the thing to run, for the thing to kick in, right? So I'm going to find my form timer interval right there. Now, this is in milliseconds. So if I set it to 1,000, it's going to run once every second. If I set it to 10,000, it's going to run one run. Say that 10 times fast. It's going to run once every 10 seconds. If you want every 60 seconds, you do that. Okay. You want every 60 minutes, you multiply that by it's whatever. Okay. All right. We got seconds times 60. All right. That's every 60 seconds times 60. That's once an hour, right? Every 60 minutes. Okay. And this can hold, I think it's a long, so it can hold lots. It can hold billions. All right. But that's good. All right. So I'm going to set mine to once every 10 seconds. 10,000. All right. And once again, the logic is going to be, we're going to look in this server table when this event runs. We're going to say, is this less than now? Okay, so in other words, if we've passed this, the shutdown time, that means we need to check to see that, you know, hey, we might have to shut down. Let's take a look at what's the startup time of the database. And if the startup time of the database is less than that, we need to shut down. Because then the next time it starts up, it'll be greater than that. And if the shutdown time is in the future, then we don't got to worry about it at all. Okay, so that's our logic. And by the way, I was thinking 
I was thinking after uh, I set this up in the last video, um, you could easily expand this if you want to have like a blackout period. If you want to say, okay, I want everybody out of the database from midnight to 6 a.m., right? You could, you could have a shutdown start time and end time in here. And instead of just looking at one date, you can say, does, does the current date time fall between the blackout times? Then just if they try to start the database, it kicks them right back out again. That's very easy to do. If you guys can't figure it out and you want to see me do it, let me know. If enough people comment on it, I'll put it in a future video. But I think it's pretty easy to figure out once we get to this point, right? Shut down start time, shut down end time. When the system boots, look at those two dates. And if the current date falls between them, just exit the database. Okay? Okay. Now, in our timer event, let's go back over here. Find the on timer event. Come in. Yeah, I'll write that. Size this a little bit. Okay. This is where the meat and potatoes go. First up, we need to look and see what the current shutdown date time is. So we need a variable dim shutdown date time as a date. And we're going to look that puppy up. So shutdown date time equals D lookup. I should have put D lookup in the prerequisites, but I think most people who get to the VBA level have, have know what D lookup is. If you don't, Here's my video on it. Go watch this. It explains how to use DLOOKUP. And also while you're at it, watch my NZ function too. This is in case you look up a value and it's null, which shouldn't happen because we control what's in here. The users can't get to server T. So this you should make sure there's a value in here. But just in case you forget to put a value in here, we'll handle it with an NZ in just a second. All right. So what are we looking up? We're looking up shutdown date time. That's the field from server T. Now, normally you put criteria here, but we don't need criteria because there's only there's one and only one record. So it's going to just get the first record. OK, and this is where the NZ comes in. Just in case that value is null, you don't want an error. So NZ and give it a value. We'll use the same value we did before. 2100-1-1. That's January 1st of 2100. And of course, VBA still flips it. Oh, it usually flips. Oh, I didn't flip it because I didn't put it in, in these things. That's my bad. Put them inside a date, the date hashtags, right? And now it flips it. There it goes. Note to the dev team, leave it the ISO standard. Don't put it like this. I have my Windows date time format set to ISO 2100-0101 and VBA still flips it. So who's ever keeping my list for me for the access dev team, put that on it. Okay. All right, so now I know when the next scheduled shutdown date time is it could be in the past it could be in the future let's put a little uh let's put a little something in here too let's put down uh status checking for shutdown this is just for us you i mean you could leave this in if you wanted to if you want the end user to see this and i'm gonna put a little uh and format now as uh like an h h n n s s kind of thing it's gonna put the current format the current time in there formatted like that just so we can watch it in the status window in fact, let's just test what we got right now. Save this, debug, compile. All right, close this, take a peek, and it should see every 10 seconds, it should pop that little status message in. That's just telling us that code's running. Not doing anything yet, just doing a little D-lookup. Come on, I don't have to sit here talking. There you go, see? And yes, it's currently 5.41 p.m., perfect. And every 10 seconds, that'll pop up in there. That just tells us that our code is working, okay? All right. Now, I'm going to shut this because while you've got a form with a timer event running on it, if you go to the VB window, it's still running and it's going to mess up your VB editing sometimes. So you're going to close that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to put that exception in there. Because for me, the developer, I'm constantly going in and out of that form while I'm working on it. All right. So to have the database shut down every time is just annoying for me. All right. Back here. So now we've got the shutdown date time. And what we're going to say is if this shutdown date time is in the past, that means we have to check because we might need to shut down the database, right? So if shutdown date time is less than now or equal to, we can make it or equal to now. If you got to shut down right now, then, right, we may need to shut down. Check when the database started. Okay, otherwise we don't need to shut down. It's scheduled in the future, right? And so just basically do nothing, end if. Okay, 
Okay, and yes, sometimes I will do this. I'll put if and then else blocks to explain the logic to myself later on. I used to be all against <laughs> writing comments because I figure I'm, I've always been a lone gunman. I never work in development teams. I never have. And so I don't bother leaving comments a lot of the time until 50-year-old me is looking back at code that 40-year-old me wrote, and I'm like, what was I thinking? So now 50-year-old me leaves comments for 60-year-old me. <laughs> so when I come back to it 10 years from now, I can see, hey, what was that all about? All right. All right, so at this point now, we have a shutdown date time that's in the past. So now I need to say, hey, did the database start up after that shutdown date time? If so, we're good because it, it was shut down at the shutdown time and the user just started it up afterwards. Okay, and again, you'll change this logic if you want to make it so that you've got a blackout dates or blackout times. Okay, but we're just, do, we're just making sure that the database itself was restarted at that, at that moment. So if tempvars startup time is greater than the shutdown date time, then the system started after the last forced shutdown. So we're okay. And here you can just exit sub if you want to. Else the system, whoop, the system started before the shutdown was issued. So we need to shut down. Okay. Status must shut down or whatever. Now, how are we going to actually affect this? What are we actually do? Well, I'm going to open up a form, a shutdown form that will display a message for the user. Yes, it's going to steal focus. So if they're in the middle of typing, boom, this form is going to pop up in their face. But they can easily set it aside for a minute or two, finish what they're doing, and then close up the database, right? All right, this thing's going to pop up in their face, and they'll have a minute or 10 minutes or an hour or however much time you want to give them. We'll discuss that in a minute, okay? But at this point right here, do command open form, shut down, shut down F. And you could even make, uh, if you want the database to talk to them, right, speak something. I got a whole lesson on making your database speak. All right, you can have it say, yo, database going to shut down. Beat it, <laughs> right? Go watch this video, see how that works. Okay, and so then we're going to end if here, and that's pretty much it. So now all we have to do is build this shutdown form. So the shutdown form is going to display a message for them, say, hey, the database is going to shut down in a minute or 10 minutes or whatever. And then that form will have a timer in it that will actually do the shutdown. Okay. That's gonna. That's how that's gonna work, and we will build that shutdown form in part three tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. You know how it goes, members. You can watch it right now because I'm gonna be recording it in about five minutes. And for everybody else, that's gonna be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member 
and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.